A new report about Carson Wentz is out from Jeff McLean, and it has went absolutely viral. You will not believe some of the things that was said from sources inside this article. I read the entire thing for the first time live to Eagles News Now, but there is a disclaimer. See, professional wrestler Chris Wilde messed up a lot of words while reading this really long article. So if you're interested in a drinking game, Every time I mess up a word, go ahead and take a shot and see if you're not absolutely hammered by the end of the article. All that, plus a couple of new coaches. Enter the Eagles search coming up next. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Eagles News Out Podcast. I'm professional wrestler Chris Wild here at Bar 4133. And if you ever thought to yourself while watching an Eagles game, man, I wonder why Carson Wentz is always doing kill, 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 and killing the play all the time, almost every single drive. You might have thought it seemed like a bit much. Some of that was explained in today's report, a big-time article from Philadelphia Inquirer reporter Jeff McClain. Now look, I've completely buried Jeff McClain in the past on videos. I uh, think he basically puts out like hit pieces. Um, However, looking back and now looking at how the situation is now, some of those pieces he put out during the summer actually are coming to life and uh, looking like they're true. So um, my bad on Jeff McClain. So I heard today that there was a, that he had a big report on basically the ins and outs of Carson Wentz's 2020 season and some of the things that Carson had done. When I heard this, my initial reaction was to read the article and then report to everybody, um, what I had read. And then I thought about it and I don't want, I didn't want to read it until I did it live on video. Um, And I'm going to read it to you guys. I'm going to read this article. It's kind of long. I haven't read it yet. So you're going to get my live reaction to it. And um, from what I hear, it's it's pretty juicy. The tea is spilt in this one. So let's get right into it. The article is actually on PhiladelphiaInquirer.com or Inquirer.com if you guys are are going to look for it. Um, It's called Inside Carson Wentz's Turbulent Season and the Forces Behind His Regression. I'm going to go ahead and read it from my Wildtron 3000. Uh, So I'm going to move it over here. And here we go. Wentz had once been the centerpiece of Roseman's return to personnel power, his most audacious acquisition. And when the quarterback initially proved the GM right, he loomed large, figuratively and literally, over nearly every decision he made for the next four years. But for many in the Eagles organization, Wentz loomed too large, and the consequence was a young man given far too much rain before he had earned hallowed space on team facility walls. The die had been cast the day the Eagles drafted the North Dakota State product in 2016 after they forfeited a ransom to move up to the number two spot. But when they doubled down with contract extension three years later, The defecation of Wentz increased, and it would sometimes play to his worst impulses. When you believe you found the great white of team sports, an elite quarterback, you hold on for dear life, and you feed for the beast. For the first two years, the Eagles on the surface appeared to do everything right with Wentz, but a knee injury in 2017 and Nick Foles taking over and winning the Super Bowl altered that dynamic. I absolutely agree with that. All right. Roseman owner Jeffrey Lurie and other Eagles leaders, however, treated Wentz as if he had won that championship. They allowed him too much influence in the draft, free agency, and coaching decisions. And while he played a large role in getting to the title game and to the postseason the next two years, he has only six playoff snaps in five years to his name. That's insane. For three straight years, injuries would end Wentz's season. The Eagles still believed in him last offseason after a concussion knocked him out of the playoff loss to the Seahawks. But drafting Jalen Hurts in the second round was, if anything, insurance for an off-injured quarterback. It was the first time the franchise had shown an inkling of doubt. And Wentz would sub- subsequently have the worst season of his career and, based on passer rating, the worst decline for an under-30 starting NFL quarterback in 70 years. Think about that, guys. 70 years. But Hertz was just one piece to the puzzle. The forces behind Wentz's regression were manifold in many ways there for years. He didn't always take the hard coaching. He struggled with accountability. He could shrink back into a tight-knit group of teammates he trusted or become isolated. 
Wentz's type A personality can be credited just as much for his past success. Many top quarterbacks share the same trait, but the 28-year-old had increasingly increasingly, easy for me to say, rebuffed advice, defied criticism, and clashed with former coach Doug Peterson last season, Eagle sources said. Every great quarterback wants to be coached, and they want to be coached hard and by the best, and it doesn't seem like Wentz wants that, one source said. It's kind of like whoever's coaching him is working for him, but it can't be that way. While Wentz at times could be his own worst enemy, many of the reasons for his decline were outside his control. The Eagles endured a rash of injuries, particularly on the offensive line, and used 14 different combinations in 16 games. The receivers and tight ends were often injured or hurt or inexperienced. Peterson's offense had become predictable, and Press Taylor, who had been given the keys to Wentz in the passing game, had been considered by many on the team to be the wrong coach for the job. Wow. While Peterson suggested to Lurie after the season that he planned to promote Taylor to offensive coordinator, it was fate accompli. The owner was already questioning whether the coach could still be paired with Wentz, but there was no way he allowed all three to return. Wentz alone also factored into Peterson's exit despite Lurie's claim otherwise. The Eagles essentially remained married to the quarterback as Roseman had put it at the time of the Hurts pick, but not because of his play, but because of his expanding contract. And Peterson's relationship with his quarterback had become splintered, if not fractured. The term ESPN report used last month after Wentz had been benched for Hurts. And what might have sealed his fate was the answer he gave Lurie on plans for his position. I remember that. I remember Doug completely saying everything was okay uh, during a press conference. Wentz, meanwhile, hadn't spoken publicly since he was removed from the Packers game on December 6th. It was unlikely that he would talk while Hurts was starting, but he turned down the opportunity after the season when he could have rebutted reports that, about his relationship with Peterson and that he wanted to be traded. There was a disconnect even before Wentz was benched, though. Peterson could call a play only, listen to this, only for his quarterback to occasionally kill it, kill, kill, kill it, for apparently no other reason than his personal distaste, sources said. It became a pissing match between the two, one of the sources said. The trust in an NFL building goes far, a source said before Peterson was fired. If there was communication and trust, everything goes faster and it goes further. And if you lose either one of those, it's going to be a hard it's going to be hard to come back from. The information in this story was compiled from reporting from team and NFL sources with direct knowledge of the inner workings of the Eagles in relation to Wentz. The sources requested anonymity and anonymity. Wow. <clears throat> because they were either unauthorized to speak publicly about the subject or they feared retribution. Nobody fears retribution. Peterson, Taylor, and Wentz declined to comment whether directly or through a representative, Roseman and Lurie have publicly endorsed Wentz's return and deemed the 2020 season a blip, although a new coach could have a, diff a differing evaluation. Nevertheless, they reinforced their commitment to him. Roseman compared Wentz to fingers on your hand the day after the Eagles finished a woeful 4-11-1 in their long-held belief in his character. He's a great guy, and he wants nothing but to win and win Lombardi trophies for Philadelphia, Lurie said Monday. This guy is tireless. He had his heart in the right place, and he really dedicated offseason, in-season. He's just what you want. Wentz does want to win. He's tireless. He's dedicated. No one publicly has ever suggested otherwise, and the same seemingly holds privately, but his resistance to hard instruction made him lose faith from coaches, and an unwillingness to accept blame for his mistakes hurt him in the locker room. He doesn't understand that he lost games for us, a veteran player said. He will never admit that, and that's the problem because he can't get it corrected. There are Eagles who supported Wentz through the season and some who continued to defend him after the season, but there was a sentiment among various coaches and players that he needed to do a better job taking the external and internal blows for the team, even if it wasn't always his fault. That's leadership, and the best do it almost instinctively because when there is another mistake, a drop pass or a false start, for example, he can go back to that player and privately tell him that he needs to clean up his performance. In the quarterback room, when his errors were pointed out, Wentz would sometimes make irrelevant excuses and Taylor wouldn't correct him. For instance, there would be a play when he didn't throw to an open receiver. The read was drawn up as designed, the coverage played out as expected, and he would be asked why he didn't pull the trigger. And Wentz would say the look wasn't there or he would overemphasize the pass rush when it was suggested the play may be run again in practice. Asked to get it right, he would object. 
John D. Filippo went his first quarterback coach with the Eagles, coached him hard. Former assistant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, offensive coordinator Frank Reich did as well. They had years of experience, though, and Wentz was just entering the NFL when he worked under them. Peterson didn't have to be the bad cop because he had DiFilippo and Reich. When he promoted Mike Groh to offensive coordinator, after Reich left to become the Colts head coach, he had someone who would play the role, although with a softer touch. Wentz would at times fight back, and Groh, who had never previously been an NFL coordinator, eventually, take a shot, eventually learned when to pick his battles. But they struggled hard to see eye to eye with Wentz focused more on playing to his strength and grow scheming plays to, to counter a defense. The divide, a prominent reason why the latter was fired last offseason. Hmm. Taylor was an offensive quality control coach when Wentz was drafted. He was a holdover from the Chip Kelly regime and would become an assistant Peterson with mentor. Taylor worked primarily with the quarterbacks from 16 to 17 and in game plan specialized in gadget plays. He has been credited with digging up the design for Philly Special in Super Bowl 52. When DiFilippo left to become the Vikings offensive coordinator, Taylor was seen as a natural replacement. Reich said that he would have taken him to Indianapolis if possible. But there was internal concern that Wentz's friendship with Taylor would cause a conflict of interest in that his inexperience could allow for the quarterback to overpower him. His nurturing style of coaching was also and what's this word? Antilit and antithetical? I don't I don't know, guys. To DiFilippo. Peterson knew Taylor needed time, which is one reason why he didn't promote him to offensive coordinator after Groh left. He made him pa pass game coordinator instead on top of the quarterback's coach and hired Rich Scangarello and Morning Wing. Morning, uh, wow. Marty Morningweg at senior offensive assistance. Scangarello would be more directly involved with scheme and Wentz while Morningweg was brought to consult Peterson and help train Taylor. But the coronavirus pandemic made it difficult for relationship building, and when advice was offered from various outlets, Taylor would often resist. The 33-year-old has been described as reserved, and while that can serve him well in certain aspects of coaching, some staff believe he needed to be more forceful, not only with Wentz, but with the offense, and Peterson handed him several of Groh's responsibilities. Some thought that Peterson had become blind to Taylor's failings because they shared the same agent in Bob Lamonte. Others thought the assistant was placed in an impractical position, and when the coordinator role wasn't filled, there wasn't a delineation of command. Peterson also struggled with communication and being more open about decisions he had made. His decision to play third stringer Nate Sudfeld in the season finale without directly telling Hurts or the team as a whole was an example of most recently cited, but there were others. No one quite knew what to make of Scangarello's role, including himself. He was hired to bring some of Kyle Shanahan's offense to the Eagles, specifically his marrying of the run and pass and play action, but the lack of practice time, limited opportunities to work on the nuances, and the offense needed a to run a fair amount to sell those plays. Peterson is a pass-first play caller. Taylor, on the other hand, struggled to be assertive at Wentz when it came to his sloppy mechanics or questionable decision-making, and Peterson, who had once met with Wentz every Thursday, no longer did so, and the only real conversation they had before games was during install meetings. There wasn't a voice among the three main coaches involved in game planning, Peterson, Taylor, and Scangarello, who could rein in Wentz. Even when they tried, many on the team saw Roseman in the front, office, front office's kid gloves treatment of Wentz as a barrier. Wow, this is really long. Most in the organization understood the amount of pressure Wentz was under and how it had been mounting since Foles won the Super Bowl. The following year, he suffered a season-ending back injury, and Foles carried the Eagles into the postseason. Last year, Wentz played all 16 games, but a concussion knocked him out of the first round of the playoff loss before it really started. The head injury was significant, and he's since spoken about its gravity. He came into camp, however, bulked up a year after he had improved his nutrition, and while the drafting of Hurts wasn't what he would have done. He told a few teammates he showed up at Novacare Center ready to pick up where he left off in terms of his on-field play. But Wentz struggled throughout camp. He never had been the best practice player, often using the time to work out kinks. But passes that had previously been secondhand were no longer. Coaches initially used the lack of spring practices as an excuse. But as the errant pa 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 passes continued, even on standard throws he made to tight end Zach Ertz, his favorite target, hundreds of times, they began to think something was wrong. Was he hurt? Were the mounting injuries finally starting to take a toll? Wentz implemented an intricate warm-up program four years ago. It isn't much different than other quarterback routines, but it's a 45-minute length seemed extreme to some Eagles staffers. Did he need that much time to get loose? Wentz suffered a lower body soft tissue injury towards the end of camp, but with no preseason, he was able to rest for an extended period and was ready for the season opener. I almost forgot about that. He, forgot, he got off to a hot start at Washington, but a late first half interception turned the tide. He tossed another pick early in the second half and was sacked eight times behind an already makeshift offensive line. 
Wentz's protection was sound the next week, but he tossed two more interceptions and wasn't seeing open receivers. The defense also played poorly. He played better the next five weeks, was inconsistent and loose. And as the losses piled up and the team overall failed to compensate, he played more hero ball. He threw ill-advised passes into double coverage. He held the ball too long and took sacks. Some coaches watched film from as far back as 2017 to see what had gone wrong. They still saw some of the same issues, but he was a tick faster in his decision-making, more athletic, and the overall strength of the team was greater. Wentz was pressing and putting too much additional pressure on himself, some thought. He's always been the cerebral type, not the cerebral assassin, but he was overthinking some... (laughs) some opinion, and wasn't taking what defenses had been giving. Hurts, meanwhile, had gravitated toward working with Morningwig. Peterson initially held off playing the rookie. He was inactive in the opener, but the offense needed a spark, and he was on the field for three plays in week two. While he had early success, Peterson was reluctant to use Hurts to take Wentz off the field when he was under center. Plays for Hurts didn't come until deep into the scripted first 15 base plays, which could mean he wouldn't get on the field until the second quarter. Some players and coaches started to wonder if Hurts' presence had affected Wentz, and with that small number of plays was Peterson being sensitive to his starter. But by the bye week, Wentz had been sacked an NFL high 32 times. A coaching analysis deemed the quarterback responsible for almost two-thirds. Around the break, one offensive lineman had gone to management and requested a switch to Hurts. Wow. Everyone believed Carson had no clue about when to get the ball out on time, a source said, and as a result made his O-line look terrible in the times they were playing fine. But Wentz was out his two best targets, Ertz and fellow tight end Dallas Goddard, and his, long, and his best long ball option, Deshaun Jackson, for extended periods. The young receivers either weren't ready or they struggled to develop chemistry with the quarterback. Peterson's play calling was also dubious. He would go on long stretches without rolling Wentz out of the pocket to take advantage of his ability to throw in the move. Wentz, in turn, made bizarre kills that made no sense and effectively was going rogue, one source said. This is, this is crazy. The coaches then started having conversations about a possible demotion. Peterson and others argued giving Wentz every chance to pull out of this funk. He had earned that right, they said. They figured a switch would, eventually, would, happen, would happen naturally, whether he got hurt or played so poorly it was it would be obvious some argued against Hurts, believing him not to be ready but peterson felt he had no choice in green bay coaches had noticed weeks earlier when dipping his eyes towards the rush early into his drop but it had become all too apparent against the packers peterson made the call on his own according to a source a source familiar with his thinking without input from Loria roseman he said as much publicly, and there was some skepticism, but after he was benched, Wentz went to the owner and GM to voice his frustration, the team source said. Unreal. Hurts remained the starter, of course, but Wentz, in his actions and assistance, was supportive. While he had lost the backing of some players before his benching, many admired how he had handled his demotion. The Eagles roster is likely to ungo, undergo significant turnover this offseason, but there will be returnees and some who might not be 100% on board with Wentz. Some coaches and players believe he can win them back. As for returning Wentz to his pre-2024, maybe not 2017, but more like 2018-2019, some sources believe it's possible. A lot will depend on the new coach and his staff, roster acquisition, and the quarterback himself. Some argued that a parting would be best for both parties, even with Peterson out of the picture. Hertz is likely to return, but Wentz's contract makes it difficult for the Eagles to justify a trade, and there aren't likely to be many suitors. If you look at the film, anybody out there would be hard-pressed to say, okay, I'm going to bring him in as my starter. Reich and Colts, Reich and the Colts would have interest with Phillip Rivers, a pending free agent, and near 40, but it would take a leap of faith and significant cost. I'm not sure Frank would take him, a source familiar with Reich's thinking said. A new environment could help Wentz. Philly is as tough as it gets for professional sports teams, but he still has an affinity for the city and naturally the Eagles. But many coaches, players, and staffers over the last five years believe that if Wentz is to return, this organization needs to peel off from treating him like a god. Really long. I messed up a shit ton of words. Um, however, I'm really digging the uh, Wildtron 3000. Um, so there it is, guys. Wow, what an uh, article from Jeff McLean. Um, it pretty much paints the picture um, that Wentz is indeed uncoachable and kind of arrogant. It also makes you think about some of the things that were leaked from the locker room a year ago. Everyone kind of shit on Alshon Jeffrey as being a snitch. Um but from what it looks like, it looks like all this stuff is starting to turn out as true. Um, and the player or the person we thought Carson Wentz was in 16 and 17, um, he really wasn't uh, behind the scenes. Um, so we'll see what happens with this, guys. It's hard after an article like this, and it's went everywhere. It's gone national. Um, it's hard to see uh, Carson Wentz coming back here, man. It really is. 
but there's tons more drama that is going to unfold as we still don't have a head coach. And the Eagles are set to, by the way, uh, interview Eric Bieniemy whenever the Chiefs are eliminated. Um, and Josh McDaniels, for some reason, that's going to happen Sunday night. So thanks for watching and listening to this long video. Um, I hope uh, that if you used this video as a drinking game, you're not too drunk by now. Um, and as always, we will have more content uh, as this offseason just gets weirder and weirder by the day. So stay safe, stay healthy. Still F Jeff McLean. Go Birds. I'll see you later. You know what? It has been a long day, a longer week. I'm going to bust out a little bit of Uncle Ronnie. We're going to party with Michael Scott. A little nightcap. Still no head coach, but you know what? We'll get there sometime. Mm, can't wait for this thing to go down. Let's do a little bit of half. Ah, here we go. Hey, Chris, can you change this keg for me, please? Sure can. Kill, kill, kill! So you got those topics down. Uh, look, it's I'm not trying to make this a long video or whatever. I'm kind of getting tired of this subject. Honestly. Dad, can you help me with my homework? It's really difficult. All right. Sorry yeah. if it's rough timing. Go ahead. I'll, I'll be right there. Okay. Kill! 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 E A T L E A.